Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. May the Lord bless us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Who oh, are thee to be praised? You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Worthy to be praised. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Who are they to be praised? You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Worthy to be praised. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord, that the worthy to be praised. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Worthy to be praised. Our Father and our God, we thank you, we bless you. We adore your holy name, we reference you. There is none like you, Jesus. We magnify you, you are the King of glory. This is another moment for us to learn from your feet. Lord, I pray that you will give us the grace to understand your word and to implement them. It's neither he that runneth nor he that willeth, but you that showeth mercy. Show us mercy, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you all in Jesus' mighty name. May the Lord bless you. This is another wonderful day for the name of Jesus to be glorified for us to listen and understand the will of God. Please, I want you to share this video as we are just coming in so that others will, will um, get their alert and um, they will be online. May God bless you as you do so in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. So this morning, uh, this hour, I want to start with a scripture which will bless our soul. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Please bring out your Bibles. It's very important. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. And I read, And God, the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help mate for him. It is not good that the man should be alone. God bless you, Evangelist Mabel, Evangelist Gift. God bless you. Uh, I think Sister Sweet Candy. Amade, God bless you. Best God's power, God bless you. God bless you, Sister Gift. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Alabi. God bless you. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you all in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Blessing. God bless you, Evangelist Eunice. You are blessed for coming online. God bless you all in Jesus' mighty name. You are blessed. Hallelujah. Just share the video. Please help me to share the video so that others can be blessed. They can get the alert and be online. Just share the video. God bless you. Evangelist Mabel, God bless you. Share the video and Jesus will bless us. Amen. God bless you, Sister Joy David. God bless you. Thank you for sharing the video. Please click share so that others can be alert that we have started. Amen. God bless you for sharing the video. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, let's start. Genesis chapter 2. We'll be looking at Genesis chapter 2. Um, I know that uh, a lot of people may be 
a little bit, the, mostly the men. God bless you, my daughter, Adana. God bless you. Hallelujah. You are around today. God bless you for that. A lot of people may be surprised in what I'm about to teach you. It's very, very important. Please, as you are coming, help me to share the video so that others can be blessed. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. Bring out your Bible. It's very important. And the Lord God said, It is not good for the man should be alone. I will make him and help mate for him. Now, I want you to understand that whatsoever God said that it is not good, that thing is not good. If God said this is not good, remember from Genesis chapter 1, all that the Lord made, he says, and they were very good. They were good. They were good. And um, when God made woman, he says, the woman, she is very good. Hallelujah. So I want you to know that whatsoever God said it is not good, note it that it is not good. Hallelujah. So in Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, God said that it is not good for a man to be alone. I want to advise all the men that are in the house. If you, are, if you have reached the stage of getting married and you are not yet married, Bible says it is not good for the man to be alone. Now, there is one thing I want to let you know. Sometimes whenever God is talking about the word man, is also referring to a woman. So when I'm saying it is not good for the man to be alone, it is not also good for the woman to be alone. Hallelujah. He said, and I will make for him a helpmate. I want you to understand that God does not want a man to be alone. That was why he had the idea to make a woman. Praise the Lord. So any man that have reached the state stage of getting married and you are not yet married God is saying it is not good so you ought to look for someone you will that is your helpmate to get married to that man um, that woman sorry I know that in our in our time mostly the problem is the money to get married there are things I want to tell you listen in the Garden of Eden there was no cake in the Garden of Eden there was no cake Adam came forth, Eve came forth, and they blessed them. In the Garden of Eden, there was nothing like there, there was nothing like wedding gown. In fact, the people that uh, witnessed the the wedding was the animals. So the problem we are having in our in today uh, um, in today uh, uh, you know um, wedding is that you want to please the masses when you are not yet ripe when you don't have what it takes i always encourage people even though you don't have money to wed come to the altar with that woman the pastor should bless you with bible you don't even need ring there was no ring in the at the wedding at, at the garden of eden the day god said it, it a man should leave his father and join to the wife and both shall be one flesh there was no ring there was no uh, cake but what is wedding Wedding is the, the, the vow both of you will take before God and the pronouncement of God's word on, your, on that day on your life. That is wedding. It's like you are, you are soldering something. That is wedding. So these days, a lot of women, they are more focused on buying the wedding gown, on, do, um, uh, on pleasing people by, you know, making it to be extravagant i'm not saying it's wrong but in the excess that you don't have it or you know you can't afford it for the now why can't you take your wife to the altar let the pastor bless you i'm telling you the fact you will never regret it there are a lot of women who are living in the life of fornication 
Instead for them to go to the altar and meet the pastor and they pray for them, very simple. You don't even need to bring food. What you need is to make the vow. What you need is for the pastor to declare you married. What the, because the pastor represents God. He represents, uh, you know, God. He is an ambassador of heaven. That is what you need. You don't even need wedding gown even to wear. In the Garden of Eden, there was no wedding gown, although they were putting on the glory of God. There was no cake. God, the people that witnessed their marriage were the animals. That is the truth about it. But you see, some of the women will say, I want to do my wedding in Dubai. You will be planning for Dubai while you are still having sex. While you are still, if you are pregnant, you are bought the baby, you are still planning for Dubai and you are still committing sin. May God save you in Jesus' name. Listen, even though your husband is very poor, no problem. Marriage should be free. In the Garden of Eden, it was free. What happened in the Garden of Eden? God created the man. He presented the, the, the man and the woman. He presented the woman to the man. The man saw the woman. He said, ah, this is the flesh of my flesh and the bone of my bone. And God pronounced his word on them. He pronounced them married. The animals were the ones that witnessed it. There was no reception at the Garden of Eden. And listen to me. If we can cultivate that habit, habit to say, I want my marriage to, to, to instead for me to commit sin, instead for me to be living in sin, in, in fornication, I want to get married and if, I, if, I can, if the pastor could bless me on the altar, I would take the vow on the altar, listen, I will be very happy. Getting married is just like salvation. You come on the altar, you say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I have accepted you today. It's just like salvation. You see, we are making things difficult for ourselves. The, the problem we are having as Christians is that we want to imitate others. We want to do it how the world are doing it. We want chief bridesmaid. We want in the Garden of Eden, who were the chief bridesmaid? Listen to me, marriage is honorable above all things, bed on the fire. But today, we choose to defy the bed so that we could be able to please people wear the wedding gown. I see some people after, after one, two, three kids or after several abortions to the same man, they will cover their face. You don't understand what it means to cover your face. Your covering of your face is to tell people that you have not been known by the man. But after you live in the same house with the man, at the day of wedding, you cover your face. Who are you deceiving? Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So what am I trying to teach us today? I want to let you know that what God requires in concerning your wedding is just you and your husband and the pastor. You go before the altar of God. In fact, the Bible says wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he is there. So if the pastor chooses to come to anywhere in your, in your, in your parlor to where do you, he call the name of Jesus, he is there. What you need to do is to make that vow before God. And when you make that vow, you don't even need to put on the, the wedding clothes. You just need to make that vow and sincerely make it with your heart. Heaven bears record. Your pastor is the representative of God. He bears record. My dear, you are married. Don't take it as a very serious, don't take it as a, a, you know, you must put on wedding gown, your wedding, your wedding gown must reach, reach America, and your chief bridesmaid will be at your back, bride rastre, uh, I mean, why are you deceiving yourself? Are you, are you, do you want to please man, or do you want to please God? Paul said, uh, 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 Peter said, we rather please God than to please man. If you know you want to please God, you don't have the money for marriage, my dear, wear that cloth you have. Even though it's green, white, yellow, red, wear it that way. Come before the altar of God. Ask the pastor. Say, pastor, I want to wed. Wed me. The pastor will bring out the words, uh, you know, the, 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 the vow wedding vow you will make this you will make a vow before the altar of god he will bless you with your bible you don't even need the ring for christ's sake in the garden of eden where they ring in the garden of eden no there was no ring you see these things are what we are fashioned we are trying to put to, to modernize the truth about it is that the wedding you make is the vow that comes out of your mouth and the pastor solely Solidar make confirm it and, and, and stand as a representative of God and agree with you that it has started. That begins the journey. That is wedding. 
praise the Lord. Please, if you are just here, if you are with me, I just want you to say yes, if you are with me, please. So that if you are not with me, I can come back and I will teach you more, um, I can explain the better. So where we are reading today is Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. And the Bible says, it is not good for the man to be alone, for I will make for him a helpmate. Listen, if you are if you are if you are if you are up to getting married and you are you are still lonely, you are tempting yourself. Paul said, Don't born in lust. Paul said, Do not born in lust. That is what Paul said. You see, the reason why we still commit fornication, you know, as a grown-up lady, you are not married, you are the men are toicing you here and there, is because you don't have a man in your life. And the reason why the men are still committing fornication even at their age is because there's no woman in their life. When is the right time to get married? I will talk about that today by the grace of God. But one thing I have to tell you, you need to put in the back of your mind today, is that, that you need to understand that God did not fashion wedding to be, you know, elaborate. It's not a must that you must elaborate it. You must, you, you must use nimosine. It is not a must. In fact, for Christians, we need to be moderate in whatsoever we are doing. Most of the people who use nimosine and, 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 and the recept those are the reception we, we go hungry. Most of the people will use nimosine and the, they will be owing debt. After nimosine, you will be owing debt. Is that wedding? You, you just started putting trouble in your life from the day of marriage. So, limousine, entering limousine, seven cake, step, those things are not the wedding. Those things are just, you know, the ceremonial aspect of it. The wedding is, I repeat it again, the wedding is when you make the vow and God, and it was, is being solidarized by the word of God. That is wedding. Hallelujah, somebody. So you can please help me if you are one of you are here. That is wedding. I see a lot of people that they are they are in a husband, they are in their boyfriend house, house. They have one child, two child. They have not yet even wedded because they are waiting for it to be great. They are waiting for Ashebi to follow you. Listen, you are still committing fornication. You are still committing fornication. You ought to wed. You, it must not be It must not be that the whole world will follow you that day before they will know you have wedded. No! Now, there are many people that always do this way. They do the wedding in a very low level when they have money. They do remembrance of marriage. You keep on remembering your marriage. If you have money, if you want to wear the white garment, you still have the right to wear it, my dear. You, 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 marriage remembrance. You can still be remembering it. It's not a sin to remember your marriage. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it is not good for the man to be alone. It is not good for the woman to be alone. The reason why there is high level of, of adult uh, fornication in the society is because the man is alone. The woman is alone. And you see, you see the, the society has made it right now that before you wed, you will, you will be keeping up to, if you are in Europe, up to 5,000 euro. And you are not working. How can you make, how can you meet up? Listen, that is the reason why a lot of women, they have children without getting married. And can I quickly tell you, God is not happy about that. In the other way around, those children in the worldly, in the in the English, if the Englishman wants to call them, they will call them, they will say these children, I mean, let me not go into that. Maybe it may offend some people. But the reality I have to tell you is this. Before you have child for a man, be sure that the man have wedded you. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Now, there are three levels where you can, three grounds where you can get, um, legalize your marriage. You see, there are many people who, who, who preach nonsense. When you look at the Bible, listen, don't, follow, don't just follow what I'm preaching. Go through the scripture. When you look at the Bible, you will understand the principle of the Bible. Everything about God is easy as ABCD. Salvation, do you pay money for it? No. It's as easy as ABCD. Confess with thy mouth, believe in thy heart that Jesus 
rose from the dead on the third day, you are safe. Simple. Marriage. Come carry your man. It can be on Sunday morning. Just tell the pastor, Pastor, I want to wed. You don't need to even call anybody. He, on Sunday morning, carry your man. Come to the altar. Tell the pastor, we, we, use, we, 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 we use the Bible to wed you. And you are married. If you choose, you take picture. If you don't choose, you leave it. But because you make that vow before the altar of God, you are married. Thank you, my sister. Some will go and borrow money to marry just to please people. At the end, they will be suffering it. In fact, if you start, if you start it that way, your, pro, your marriage will begin to have problem. So I encourage you, those that are not yet married, you are a brother, you are a sister, go and meet your pastor. Tell him you want to wed next Sunday. Hey, pastor, is he urgent? Is it that way? Yes, if you can fornicate without having shame, you need to make it very urgent. That is the truth about it. The kingdom of God is urgent. To please God should be urgent. You are doing it not for anything, but to respect your woman to rest and to please God. Your wife have given one child, two child. You have not yet married her. Are you, are you, are, you are just disgracing her. I know that these days women don't have, dis, don't have shame. Some of them don't have shame. They can even you know, carry child for a man and they will be going along without shame. Which is wrong. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Bible says it is not good for a man to be alone. I will make for him a helpmate. Do you know that that woman is your helpmate? There is something I preach one time and many people say, No, 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 pastor. This preaching is too high. Pastor, don't preach it that way. My, my wife will change. But can I talk to somebody? The man has the responsibility of the family. If you can agree with me that the man has the responsibility of the family, you will know that in the family, the man is the one that God will ask questions. If anything is wrong in the home, is the man. When Adam and Eve come ate the fruit, who did God ask? The man. Adam, where are you? He did not say Adam and Eve, where are you? Eve was there. It was Adam he called. Adam, where are you? If you are a man, you need to understand that the responsibility of your family is on you. God look up to you, not even up to your wife. Your wife is your helper. Remember, he said, and I will make a helpmate suitable for him. Your wife is your helper. Don't kill that woman. You want the woman to do everything for you. It's wrong. I want to tell you the truth. Listen, if truly you know that your wife is your helper, anything your wife can't do, you are the one to do it. If your wife says, I'm tired, honey, I can't wash plate, it's your responsibility to wash plate. Your helper is tired. If your helper says, honey, please, I cannot go and take the children to school. Help me to take them to school. It is your responsibility. Your wife is your helper. If a helper is tired, the one that has the responsibility should do it. Now, I'm not saying that that should be a liberty for license to be disobeying your husband or to ridicule him. No. But I'm trying to make the men to understand. You see, there are some men who take their wife as house help. My wife will cook. My wife will clean the house. My wife will bath me. My wife will bath the children. Is your wife a slave? Don't you know that that woman is your helper? Did you want to kill your helper? Do you want to kill your helper? Is your wife a slave? You are the one that have the responsibility. Listen, if in the family, both of you know, you know, you know, you are you are working, you are working, and your wife is not working, should not be, should not be the reason why you treat her like a house help. If you have the opportunity to do the things at home, do it. She is what? Your helper. Who is a helper? A helper is somebody that, that assists. A helper is somebody that assists. Men, do not take your wife as a slave. Do you know, men, in the whole, in the, you have the responsibility to do everything at home. And, every, and to still bring money. That is your responsibility. But God gave you a wife to help you. 
So in case your wife cannot do it, not out of not out of disobedience, but out of maybe she was tired, don't think that she is I mean don't don't take it that she have disobeyed you. Please, I'm putting this across to the men because note it that your wife, she is your helper, not your slave. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I want to say this. If you have any question, whenever I'm teaching, you have the right to type in the question so that I can be able to um, explain more. If you are not um, satisfied by the word, the, question, the, the, the words I have given, you can just let me know and God, I will, I will repeat it again. I will make, give you more proofs why I said that your wife is not your slave but your helper. Let me give you for instance. The Bible have already said in Genesis 2 verse 18 that it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helpmate. Now, if you want to carry something on your head, I think you will say, please come and help me. You, the person helps you to carry it on your head, not on the person's head. So anybody who wants to help you has less to do. You are the one that have the major work to do. So I am saying this not to uh, 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 make the women happy, but the day a man knows that the light bill, I am the one to pay it. You see, there are some homes which, I mean, there is already division. How can the man be keeping money one, one side, the woman be keeping money one side? Listen, listen, you have started creating a division. If you, it is a godly home, that home must be in unity in terms of finance, in terms of, uh, 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 you know, responsibility, both of you will come together to make it work out. The two shall be one. And I see some family in some homes, the woman will be keeping her money. If she goes to work, she makes money, she keeps it separate. And the man keep it separate. They say, okay, madam, pay this, let me pay. The day you, the woman don't pay this, you will not pay this. You are wrong, my dear. You are totally wrong. When that money, the man makes money, the woman makes money, that money should go on one bag and should be decided upon on how to use it. It should not be a must that the woman will pay your house rent and, you will, and the, the woman will pay the feeding money, you will pay the house. It is not a must, but it is something you do in unity, in love, in one accord. That is the truth about it. Please, I don't know what I'm communicating to somebody. If I'm communicating, let me just hear that yes. If I'm communicating, it is wrong. It is wrong. And you say both of you are you, you have started the separation already. You know, sorry, I will offend some women now. I want to offend you. It is also wrong. Your pro the day you marry your husband, your property belongs to him. His own property belongs to you. The money in your account belongs to your husband. The day you marry him, the one in his account belongs to you. You see, there are some people that will come and say, no, 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 now I've married him. No, 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 my property is separate. He, he, he married me without my property. You are, you, are just, you are just segregating your family. You are just dividing it. You are just making your family, I mean, try to put, put problem in your family. Somebody will say, no, the day I married, before I married you, I've already built that house, so, so remove your eyes from that house. Let us, let us plan another thing. You are wrong, my dear. You are wrong. Totally wrong. The day he married you, he married everything you have, everything you own. He married everything about you. He married you, you woman. So both of you, we put heads together to see it works. You bring all everything you have, he will bring. Now, I want to make this clear. There are some, I use this word, stupid men. I use the word, listen, whenever I'm calling persons stupid, I know the reason why I'm calling them stupid. Uh, there are some stupid men, when they meet a woman, they want to marry a woman, they will say, eh, now I want to marry you. Uh, I want to pay your bride price, you will bring half half of the money, then I bring half of... That man is stupid. If a man cannot pay the wife bride price, that man don't supposed to be a man. Listen, 
Any woman that gives money for to the man to pay his bride price, we never respect. That man will never respect you. It's better the man go and borrow money to pay the bride price. After paying the bride price, eh, eh, that is when, if he's talking about bring money, then you can listen. There are some men who, you know, when they meet them, the, 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 a, a woman says, okay, how, how much do you have? How much do you have? Then what dignity do you have as, as, as a woman? You know, do you know what it takes during those our father time that they say a man wants to marry? It's the man that takes the responsibility of everything. The woman will just be as if she's sleeping. And after everything has been done, they say, woman, come, I have now married you. But in our today, mostly in Europe, any man that is talking about marriage is trying to know how much you have in the account. That man is a thief. After getting married to you, that is when you have the right to know how much in your, that is in your account. He don't have a right to know the amount in your account after he, because the man is, is coming for you, not for your money. Any man that is coming directly, say, I want to marry you, bring your house, your document on the table, bring your uh, 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 account on the table, please run for that man. He is more than, he is more than uh, Evans. Run for him. Sorry for using that word, but it's more than him. Praise the Lord. So what am I saying? If you are a man you want to marry, do everything possible not to collect a dime from that woman to pay her bride price. Try your best to, even though it takes you to borrow money, borrow money, that is your pride as a man. After you have paid that bride price, eh -eh, that is when you have right over the woman. Please, this should stop. Whenever you want, a man wants to marry, you will begin to ask the woman, eh, how much do you have in the account? Eh, since, how many, since you are in Europe, how many guests do you have in the street? Eh, eh, I mean, that man is not coming for marriage. He's coming to extract from you. Is coming to eat you up. So that woman, be careful. Just be careful of that man. Because that kind of person is more than Evans, as I've said. And I'm very sorry to use that word. He's a kidnapper. He wants to kidnap you and extract from you. Today, men are not even interested of true love. They only, their, their love is only on their lips. It is when you buy them marker, that is when they will say, I love you. When you buy them phone, that is when they will say, I love you. The latest phone. Listen, know that that person is a kidnapper. He just wants to kidnap you and eat from you. There are many kidnappers walking about. It is not only the one that we catch red-handed. Some men, mostly in Europe, they are kidnappers. I don't know whether they call them Shentru or whatever. Jingolos. They are kidnappers. The other word for Jingolo is a kidnapper. They kidnap you and they promise you marriage, they, 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 they bring you to zero, and they leave you for another woman. Be careful. We have men Delilah. Be very, very careful. I don't know the reason why God wants me to do this video, but I know that there are many women that are in the trap. See, can I advise you? Listen, women, women, listen. Any man you are dating for six months, he have not sit you down to tell you, I will marry you. Sit him down. Tell him, where is this marriage heading to? I cook spaghetti, you chop. I cook a goosey soup, you chop. I cook banga soup, you chop. Ah, ah. In the night, if you are not a believer, you also chop. Where is this marriage heading to? Please, am I communicating to somebody? Sit him down. Ask him, where is this relationship heading to? If he's, treat, if he's not heading to marriage after six months, my dear, a, somebody once says, it's better they, 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 they laugh you than to cry you. It's better they laugh you than to cry you. I'm telling you the truth. Take he run, run, borrow. Somebody say, borrow leg and run. So what am I saying? There are a lot of jingolos that have gone out there to extract from women. 
No, 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 no. If you're in a relationship, hey, pastor, uh, 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 I'm still, uh, we are still, I'm still, you are still one month. You have not yet concluded whether you will marry her or not. I'm not saying, I'm not saying you should fix, you, you should marry her immediately. At least give the woman hope that, ah, he has found a man. You never, you only tell him, let's be friended. After six months, you, you never even say, yes, you are good or you are not good. You are still eating her. It's totally wrong, my brother. I'm talking to the men right now. It's totally wrong. What I advise you to do, if you know that you will not marry that girl, quickly leave that girl so that you won't break her heart. Yes, it's better you leave her for good than to keep her after wasting her time. There are some relationships you see two years, three years, four years, five years. And after wasting the time of that girl, that is the time you will go to Africa to marry, you know, the one you think that is good for you. It is wrong. If that girl swear for you, cause you, it will affect you. I will talk on that. God bless you, Sister Joy. Praise the Lord. I will talk on that. It is wrong. Listen, the reason why some men, after they, 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 they abandon a woman and go for another woman, they find it difficult to survive with that so-called woman, is because when you deal with somebody, even heaven will be a record and fight you. There are things you do to a woman that if she costs you, that cause will affect you. Because you are the one. The Bible says the cost costless shall not come. But if you have offended that person, the woman costs you, it will affect you. So I am advising all the men, you are jumping, you know, you are hosting, holding a woman hostage and you are still promising her, I love you, I love you, and you know you will not marry that woman. Please, I beg you in the name of God. I want every one of you to share this video around the world because there are many jingolos around. Share it and God will bless you. That man, I beg you, leave that young girl alone. So that it will not be late for her. One thing you need to understand that they, 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 they match, you know, men, even though, you know, you, they, if you have a, a young man of 30 years, he's still young to get married. But a young woman of 30 years, there is no more time on her, the chance on her side. You will delay a woman for five years and you abandon the woman, go to Africa to marry. And you think it will be well with you. Listen, we have laws. Whatsoever you sow is what you reap. We have laws. So I advise you, please, if you know the relationship you are into, you are not into, you are not in that relationship with your two legs. Please remove your leg, even the one you have put in that tell that girl, please. I am sorry. This is this is my intention, and I'm not ready. There are some people that will promise a girl, I want to marry you in Europe or in anywhere, but they have another wife somewhere. And after breaking that woman's heart, you think that your family will have peace. Listen, if that girl calls you, I'm telling you, you don't need to go to anywhere to, you know, to do anything bad. If the, the Bible said death and life are in the power of the tongue, if any woman that you, you frustrate calls you, it will affect you. Heaven will even back the woman up. Because you deceived. Hey, pastor, I didn't promise her marriage now. Then why are you eating her money? then why are you wasting her time? In my ministry, I give it six months after courtship. If you want to marry the woman, tell me. If fixed date, pastor will marry her three years time, four years time, no problem. So far as you have said it with your mouth, you will begin from that day to be planning the wedding. And by the grace of God, in Mezai ministry, we have a lot of marriages we have conducted. To God be the glory. And I pray for everyone that is watching me. You are not married. God will locate you and give you your own in Jesus' name. God will favor you this year. Listen, I want to talk to the women. I don't know the reason why I moved to talk to the women. Listen. Call your husband-to-be. Sit him down. Ask him, which way are we going forward? Are we coming backward? If you can do this, you will save tears of the future. If you can do this, you will save your tears for the future. And 
There is another thing I have to tell you. There are some stupid women. I use the word stupid. You know that this man will not marry you. You are doing everything to marry you. You are stupid. You know. Instead of holding yourself, pray for the right one. I pray that God will give you understanding. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, I want to... Um, I'm giving you counseling and advice and preaching to you. I want to let you know that any man that comes into your life is, is either is coming to, to build you or to destroy you. Any man that is coming into your life is either is coming to build you or to destroy you. So anytime any man comes into your life, sit him down and ask him, what did you come for? Look, it is better you ask the man now than to ask him when he's late. Why are you in my life? Why did you want me? Are you get the fact from the man? Tell him you don't want to drag you him with any woman. Make your make it plain to the man. This is what I want. So if you are not ready, go. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. I think, uh, please, if you're online, you are hearing me, can I just hear your yes? If you know you are hearing what I'm saying, and you believe in what I'm saying, just write yes. If you don't believe in what I'm saying, you are still free to write no. Please, I want to see it right now before I move forward. I want to see it right now. Amen. I want to see it right now. I want to see it right now. I want, if you know you believe in what I'm saying, just write yes. Please, any word I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying it vice versa. I'm not talking only on the men or on the women. If I'm talking about the women, everything is also referring to the men's side. Please, you, are, you people have already known what, what I mean by that. So if I'm talking particularly to the women, I'm also referring also to the men. God bless you all. Sister Philip, Emmanuel, Joy, David, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, all of you. Now, I want to show you a scripture. I want to show you a scripture. That scripture will open your eyes. I want to show you a scripture. Open to Psalm 106, verse 15. Wherever you are, open it. Open it. Psalm 106, verse 15. If you are there, 106. Hallelujah. I want to show you something. 106 verse 15 I want to let you know that verse 15 are you there okay are you in Psalm 106 verse 15 listen carefully listen carefully he says he gave and he gave them their request but send leanness to their soul underline that scripture if you know that you are want to get married to the right man. Underline that scripture. He gave them their request. He sent leanness to their soul. There are some women, they are married, but they are suffering. They are saying, oh, why? Why? And listen, you know, these are the same women that say, God, if you don't give me this man, I will not serve you again. Do you know my advice to you that is watching me right now? Do you know my advice? Any man that leaves you, thank God. You see, if you're in a relationship, the man walk out of you, thank God. If you're a prayer person, you keep on praying. Your prayer should be, Father, if this man is not my true husband, let him walk out of my life. You see it here? He gave them that. But there are some people that say, Father, in any condition, I want to marry him. Even though the God is telling you he's not your husband, you say, I want to marry him. Your mother will tell you, hey, be careful of this man. I want to marry him. And when you're already in the marriage, you will come to know that Satan is your father-in-law. Satan will begin to bring out his color. Look, the problem we are having is that we cannot see far. He gave them their request, but send leanness to their soul. There are people that their marriage is boring. It's like they are in hell. Why is it so? They didn't listen to God. When God was, was telling them, this man will kill you. This man, this man will pan beat you. You say, I love a man that always beat me. Father, give me like that. 
And when the man use you as McTyson versus Holyfield, you will begin to ask God question. Why are you asking God question when it is too late? What is the solution? Ask God to change. Ask God to have mercy on you. There are some requests you ask from God that you know it is not right, but you are asking that, those requests. I remember a time people are praying, Father, give me a, a man that has money, even though it's a 419. You marry a, somebody that is a, a froster. When the police will hand, uh, handcuff him, you will say, God, where are you? God was there when you asked for it. Make your requests be made known to God. Let it be according to the will of God. Why am I trying to show you this scripture? There are some, there are some requests you make to God that is wrong. Imagine somebody, you are praying that a married man should come and marry you. A married man should come and marry you. Do you know what it is? A married man should come and marry you. That means you want to be the second wife. And you know what it takes to be a second wife. He gave them their request, but sent leanness to them. May it not be our portion. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to quickly run up something. Now, everybody look at me. Look at me, please. This is very important. Understand this. If you can understand what I'm about to teach you now, you will know that marriage in fact you you are you are too free to get married we have three ways to legalize our marriage in the bible god advises us to do it in three ways number one number one god wants you to honor your father and your mother the bible says, honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long on earth the reason why we Christians are still doing traditional marriage, it is traditional. There are some traditional marriages that are so demonic and diabolic. They will present you before different shrines, before they will give you out for marriage, depending on, your, on where you came from, on your ethnicity. Listen, it's good you do traditional marriage. God accepts it. It is valid. Now, apart from traditional marriage, you, God also accepts you to do court marriage. What do we mean by court marriage? We call it in, in Italy here, common marriage. In Nigeria, we call it registry. I think marriage registry or something like that. The government is the one in charge of that. That one is also very important. Somebody said, no, the marriage registry will go to. That marriage registry is 100% important. Court marriage is 100% important. Traditional marriage, 100% important. Church marriage, 100% important. Now, these three are important. I will prove it to you. If you marry traditionally, you, have, you are married before God. You have the right to sleep with your wife. You do not commit fornication or adultery. If you marry in the court, you also have the right to sleep with your wife. You do not commit any crime. It is not a sin. You didn't commit adultery or fornication. If you also marry in the church, you also did not commit crime. You have the right to sleep with your wife. Now, I want to make this clear to you. I've had a lot of people say this. Uh, if they don't pay your bride price, you never marry. You are lying. It's a lie. Listen, listen carefully. This may be a new teaching to you, but listen carefully. As you listen, God will bless you. Listen carefully. If you are in Europe, you are in Europe and um, your wife is in Nigeria. Will they ask you to bring your, you want to bring down your wife to abroad? Will they ask you to bring your traditional certificate that you are married? No. They will ask you to bring the court certificate that you are married. We have different levels where we, where we can legalize our marriage. Three levels. Court, church, 
and tradition. Tradition is important to honor your father and your mother. Court is important to honor the, to honor the government, to prove to the government you are married. The church is important to honor God and to receive the blessing from God. Any of this one that you do, you are married. Now, let listen. Before you do anything of the church or court marriage, you, if you don't have the, the means to go to your village to do the traditional marriage, to honor your parents, you must, listen carefully now, you must get their you must get their 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 uh, uh, you know their their go ahead you must get their go ahead before you can do court marriage or church marriage this is the reason why many people always send their brother to stand for them you know i i told you last time yesterday i told you yesterday that Anybody who sent his sister to stand for her so that, uh, you know, they will get married in Nigeria, you are in Europe. It is your sister that is getting married, not you. When the blessing come, the blessing come upon your sister, not you. You remember Esau, Jacob, I used that. Go and read there again. You understand that when, when Jacob say, I am Esau, the father blessed and he blessed Jacob. That is the truth. So stop it. It is an error to ask your sister to collect your blessing. The truth about it is that you are not the one that is blessed. It is your sister that was blessed. So imagine two people that don't have document in abroad. There is nowhere to go to Nigeria. And what if somebody will tell me, hey, Pastor, they need traditional marriage before they... What the, I, I practically advise my children to do? Get to your parents. Let them know each other. And let them give you their consent. Let them give you their go ahead, their consent that we have met each other as families. We have we are giving you the go ahead to wed them. We, whenever you people have document, come down to Nigeria and do the traditional marriage. If your parents gave you the go ahead, my dear, you can marry in the church even with that traditional marriage. You are married. You are hundred percent. Prove me anywhere. I am the one telling you. You are married. This is the reason why there is fornication in the house of God. You want to go to Africa. You want to go to Africa. One year, two years. You don't even have document. You are looking for the money, and 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 after all this while, you will not. You will end up in in in, in, in having the first child, second child without marriage. It is wrong. I have scriptures to prove it to you. Listen to me. If you if you can have the consent of your parents, you have the right to marry even without your traditional marriage being done. You are hundred percent married, even though you don't want to do it in the church. You have the right to do the court marriage anywhere you are. You are hundred percent married. Quote me anywhere, please share this video. There are people that need to know the truth. The truth must be said. Instead of committing fornication, committing adultery, and when you are pregnant, you abort the child, you are waiting for when you go to Africa for you to go and pay bride price. Listen, it is wrong. So far as the both parents come together and say, we have accepted that my son will marry your daughter and let them marry in abroad. When they come back, they can do the traditional aspect. If that can be done, my dear, go ahead and do your marriage, your, your wedding, you are married. Please, if you are still on the line, you am talking to you, just write yes. I want to know how many people are on the line. Some people may on their phone and be sleeping. If you know you're on the line, just write yes. If you know you're on the line, just write yes, and God will bless you for that. And please, as share this video. It's only 12 people that have shared it. Share this video right now because some people ought to get this video and be blessed. Why is Satan deceiving you? Why is Satan putting you in, into that bondage? God has not called us into bondage. We are not in bondage. Listen very carefully. The word of God has made us free. God has made us free. Don't allow any pastor to deceive you. Those pastors, ask them before they get married whether they did the same thing. Some of them even pregnanted their wife even before marrying their wife. And they are putting the load on your head. 
That is the truth. Quote me anywhere. My name is Pastor S.O. Divine. Quote me anywhere. If you, can, if you can take this principle, I'm telling you, my dear, you don't have problem about getting married. You can, you can decide. You and your husband can just decide. Honey, this Sunday I want to wed you. Maybe it can be on Friday. And two days, honey, I want to wed you this Sunday. Are you sure? You say, you call your pastor. Pastor, I want to wed my wife. Yes, you don't need to bring anything to church. You see, you are, you, people are just, are just making things difficult for themselves. For me, you just need to carry your Bible. Come to the altar. You, make, you just make the vow as if you are accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. Do you know, look, do you know that the things of God is so easy as A, B, C, D. It is we that is making it difficult. When you receive salvation, did you pay any money? Did you call for people to come and eat and drink? As how much salvation is important. So why, when you want to do your wedding, I'm not saying if you have it, do it. But when you don't have it, will you kill yourself? For you to please God, wear any cloth you have, come to the altar of God, and God will be pleased. Pleased. God will be very happy for you. Stop listening to all those men of God that are making things difficult for you. They will tell you, you must go to Africa. You, when you don't have documents, how will you go, go to Africa? And you'll be sleeping, and you'll be sleeping with the man. You'll be sleeping with the man, and they will be calling you a fornicator. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please, the ones that said no, I don't understand. If you, you can write it in full, let me understand why you said no. If you want me to explain better, I can make more, I can explain better to you. Praise God. Now, if you have the money, I'm begging you, make do it with the, your money. Buy limousine. If you would not even rent limousine, buy limousine. Very simple. But when buy, you don't have the money. Why go to borrow? People always go put themselves into trouble. You go and borrow money. After borrowing, 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 at, at, at the end, you put your husband into trouble. There are certain times after marriage, they will begin to call me, Pastor, eh, I mean, may God bless as many that listen to this word in Jesus' mighty name. So I think I've made it clear. Now, in that same way, you do not divorce. No, many people believe that when they do traditional, when, when they do court marriage, they can divorce the, the man and go and do traditional marriage. It is wrong. The Bible says, let no man put asunder. In fact, God will be angry with that person that will sign the certificate of divorce. When you are married, you are married. Nobody will break it. It's either you separate yourself and remain single until one of you die. When one of you die, then you can remarry. But if you are the one that killed that person, <laughs> God will judge you for killing the person. You know, there are some people that will say, ah, they say, it's, we let one person die before you remarry. You will find every way to kill the person. My, my dear, the judgment will be more severe on you. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Please, I think I've made a point tonight. I think I've made a point tonight. If there's any question you ask me, and uh, there's area I've not yet touched, but I will leave it... Um, Okay, let me talk about this, which is very important, before I run up. If you have question, I think there's a sister that asked me question before. Please write the question again. If you asked me question before, I can go back to the question again. Just write it down. Listen, listen. I want to talk to the married women. Married women, you are the one that have this talk right now. Listen. You have never respected your husband, but you are calling your pastor daddy. You are stupid. You are calling your husband, Papi Ifani, but you are calling your own pastor, Daddy. Is it your daddy that is sleeping with you? I don't know where some women brain, where your brain, you, if, you have, if you cannot respect your, past, your husband, in fact, the respect should come from your husband first before you can call your, 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 your pastor, Daddy. Is your pastor, Daddy. 
Your husband is your daddy, not your pastor. Your pastor is your pastor. If you are calling him daddy, you are, you are trying, that is the reserved that you have after calling your husband. I don't know what I'm communicating to somebody here. Stop that nonsense. This is the reason why men, most men pick offense. They will say their wife will not go to church again. They respect their pastor more than their husband. You look at your husband and say, idiot. In the, in the next minute, you are calling your pastor daddy. You are calling your pastor daddy when you have not yet respected your husband. How will there be peace in that home? No, tell me. How will there be peace in that home? Stop calling me that me myself. Stop calling me daddy if you are not respecting your husband. Yes, start laughing. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Stop calling your pastor daddy. The daddy is supposed to start from your husband. In fact, call your pastor pastor. If you are married, stop calling your pastor daddy. He's not your daddy, he's your pastor. He's, he has a title. His title is not daddy. His title is reverend, bishop, pastor. Praise God. This thing is causing confusion in the family. It's causing a big confusion in the family. It's very big confusion. Stop that. Stop that. You woman, you are thinking you are pleased. Some people fear their pastor more than their husband. They, 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 if, if, they, if they, I mean, they, they have, you know, the way they pass food to their pastor, they have not yet tried it to their husband. And you think that that marriage will be at peace. Did you think the marriage will be at peace? Now, I will come back to that. I will come back to this. There's something I remembered now. Let me chip it in. Listen carefully. If you do your wedding in the low key, you can be doing marriage anniversary every year. If you want to do it every six months, it's your money. If you have money. If you do it in the low key, maybe you just do it, I am my wife, you can be doing your marriage, marriage anniversary. Do it as you want. You are doing the marriage. You are thanking God. For your marriage anniversary, you can call it um, what did they call it again? Either they call it re rededication, or you know, you you want to renew renewing of vow. It is possible. Go and renew the vow. Then you know you are already married. Then you know you have the money. Then you know that your your family. Look, there are certain things I want to let you know. There are many women that have made a mistake. They want when they want to wear the wedding gown. I want to wear wedding gown uh, because of that. I will abort my child, and after you have aborted that child, wedding gown. After wearing it, no more child. It is wrong. Let's not glorify Satan. You can go with your husband. Come wherever you are. Call me. I will come and wed you. If your pastor don't want to wed you, I'm I'm gifted in wedding people. My children can tell you that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So now, you can do marriage anniversary. I want to remember my 10 years marriage anniversary and renewing of vow. It is, it is acceptable before God. Renew that vow. Say, honey, I, love, I still love you. You, are the, you make it before God. It is not a sin than to be waiting for your wedding gown to reach Jerusalem. And after everything, you cannot be able to give birth anymore because you have been removed going for abortion and waiting for the white wedding. And can I quickly warn every church member or anybody that wants to wed, if you know that that man has slept with you, don't cover your face for judgment's sake. The judgment may not be from, from the pastor. For judgment's sake, don't cover your... If you know that the man has slept with you, you know, we have... We have virgin we have two kinds of virgin we have those ones who are naturally virgin and we have those ones who are christian virgin if a man be in christ is a new creature all things have passed away and behold that one is a christian virgin yes the day you give your life to christ you are a virgin so to say don't sleep with any man if that man that is getting married to you have have gone to bed with you why covering your face remove it let them know that i uh, don't this man don't see me it is not a sin it is not a sin. It is not a sin. 
I think I will, I'm going to um, conclude with this daddy of a thing. Please, tell any woman that is not respecting the husband should stop calling their father in the Lord daddy. It is wrong. The, the respect should come from home first before we can talk about outside. This has caused a lot of problems. Please, I beg you for the name of, in the name of Jesus, share this video. There are a lot of people that want to watch, listen to this advice and be blessed. If you know you are blessed by this word of encouragement, share this video. And God will richly bless you as you do so. Hallelujah. Just click share on it. Lastly, if you have any question, let me handle it. Tomorrow, I will be starting by 11 o'clock. I will be starting by 11. I have something something to tell you tomorrow which you which will bless you. Something to tell you which will bless you tomorrow. So I, I, I have my eat here. But because of our time, I cannot continue because of our time. Some people ought to go and sleep. Sir, many women are very useless now nowadays. My sister, God bless you. Or is he a sister or brother? God bless you. Listen, listen. Let me add to what you just said. These days, we hardly have what I call wife material. What do I call it? Wife material. It's very rare. Before you marry, marriage is like school. You need, before you marry, go to school. Go to school. Know what is called wife material. Wife material is very, very rare in Christendom today. You will see a woman that is planning or that is asking God to give him a husband. All your ears are full of earring. Your nose, earring. Your eye, earring. Your tongue, earring. Your shoulder, tattoo. Are you a wife material? See, how you dress is how you will be addressed. If you are not dressing as a woman, <laughs> You will be addressed as somebody on the street. There are some women, when you see them dressed, you will see their inner wears. Sorry, let me use this word, we Africans. You will see their pants, their, their underwear showing, their pants showing, their breasts showing. Who are you showing those things to? And you, are, you want to marry a decent man. If you ask the woman, eh, who do you want to marry? A God-fearing man. A man that is handsome. Are you, are, are you God-fearing? Are you, you that wants to marry God-fearing, are you God-fearing? God bless you, dear. God bless you. God bless you, sister. Hallelujah. Are you God-fearing? So please, I'm giving this word not to judge any young girl, but you must cut your excesses. You must understand that there are ways the people of the world dress. They are where the children of God do their own dressing. You dress moderate. You know, I said it the other time. It is wrong for a woman to go to the swimming pool. And after the swimming pool, you take a picture and place it on a Facebook wearing bra and pants. My dear, if the white people are doing it, does that mean you will do it? Do you know that the white people go naked on the street? Can you do it? Can you go naked on the street? That is the question. Eh, eh, we're in a modernized age. You, on a, you, where you, are you modernized? Listen, when the world is changing, don't allow the world to change you. You are a child of God. The Bible says all these things are the things of the world. Don't allow the world to change you. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So I will stop here tonight. Because I know that there are many people who want to go and sleep. If you have any question to ask, ask me. Please share this video. Just click share right now. Don't share it later. Now. And as you do so, God will bless you. Hallelujah. Remember, I will pray for you. I will pray for you. I will pray for you. God bless you. Tell them. Not only tell them, but it's tell us. God bless you, sister. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to round up now by saying you will get the man of your choice. If you are already into that marriage, I pray that that marriage will work. 
in Jesus' mighty name. What you just need to do is to put yourself in order and ask God for grace to move ahead. Marriage is a race. You run, 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 you tire, you rest. You keep on running, on, you tire, you rest. Now listen carefully. The Bible says, if thou faintest in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. You ask God to give you strength to torelate that woman, to torelate that man. Tomorrow I will teach you something about how to keep your home. How to keep your home is very important. Hallelujah. So I thank every one of you. What, what thing you do for me that will make heaven to get to be happy is to share my videos. And as you do so, God will bless you. Because there are people that need to get these videos to be blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. So for tonight, I want to close. Just thank God for what He has been doing in your, your relationship. Bless the name of Jesus. Thank God for His grace upon your life. Thank Him for His faithfulness. Thank Him for His blessing. Just thank God for those children He has given to you. Bless Him and give Him praise. Give Him all thy glory. Give Him all thy praise. Lord, we give you all praise. We give you all glory. We exalt your holy name. We magnify you. We reference you. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to learn from your feet. Be glorified and be exalted in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Now you are going to pray. If you are in a relationship, pray for that man. Pray for that man or pray for that woman. You are in a relationship. Ask God to have his way in that life. Just pray for that your, your partner. If you are not yet in relationship, ask God to give you one. It's very, very important. Just pray right now. Pray for that person, your spouse, your, your husband or your wife or your fiance, fiance. Pray for them right now. Just open your mouth and pray for that one right now. Lord, I pray for my wife. I pray that my wife will love me more than ever before. Hallelujah. And I pray that the grace of God will be upon our life to love each other the more. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want you to also pray. You are going to make one prayer for me. That any sin you have committed while you are in your relationship, that God should forgive you. Any sin you have committed, ask God to forgive you. That you want to make it straight with the Lord. Just pray right now. And God will bless you as you do that prayer. Father, I pray for mercy. Any sin these ones have committed while in their relationship, in their marriage, we pray for mercy. We pray for your grace to sustain them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. It is done. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now you are also going to pray that God should help you in your weaknesses. Some of you, your weakness is anger. In, when the man talk one, you talk ten. Pray that God should help you in your weaknesses. Just pray right now. Every weakness you have, God should help you. In that weakness, God should heal you. Pray right now in Jesus' name. Makatala pasata. I pray that you help these ones. Help us in our weaknesses. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, help us to make it up to our spouse. Help us to live a, straight, a, 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 a life that is worthy of emulation. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and Amen. You are also going to pray tonight that any destiny, any marriage destroyer, relationship destroyer will not destroy your relationship. There are people who will just be there to destroy your marriage. They will be there to destroy your relationship. Ask God to protect your family, to protect your marriage from marriage destroyer. Pray in Jesus' name. Father, as I pray for these ones, Lord, keep them safe. Keep their marriage safe from marriage destroyers. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may you be saved from marriage destroyer. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Rakabayema Santo Ligradosa. Zupra tata tatata mali tata mali prahanda in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Now listen, there is something that comes to my spirit right now. Some of you, your mother came from a polygamous home, your father have a, a, a polygamous home, and that is the spirit that is still connected to your life. You are going to disconnect your 
your own immediate family, your relationship from polygamo, from polygamous uh, uh, spirit in Jesus' name. That you see, sometimes your man will be choosing to flirt outside. That is the spirit of polygamy. Ask God to really dis disconnect your family from polygamous home. Your husband will not marry two wife. In the name of you, you will not leave your husband for another man. Break that yoke of polygamy right now. Pray in Jesus' name. Your husband will not marry two wife. Break that yoke. You ought to pray for yourself right now. This is the reason why we are we are unity. We are pray. We are we are we are, we are prayer uh, partners. I break every yoke of polygamy that is functioning in your life, connected to your father's side. Or to your mother's side i break it your husband will not go for another woman and you will not leave your husband for another man i break it in the name of jesus i release you to be with your husband in jesus mighty name that we have prayed amen now you are going to pray say father build my home the bible say if god did not build the, this house those that are building are doing in vain. say lord build my home build it with love build it with love unity happiness build my home can you pray that prayer loud lord build my home build in my home build my home build my home ma katalabaza zuprate ma supra katalabaye build my home in the name of jesus christ of nazareth thank you father in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now you are going to pray. Nobody will found, be found wanted in your family. No, Your child will not die. You will not be a widow. You, your, husband, your husband will not be a widower. Pray that every one of you will live to declare the goodness of God. Open your mouth and pray. You will not lose anyone in your family. Can you pray for yourself? Because it's important. Pray. You will not lose anyone in your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not be a widow. You will not be a widower, you that is watching me. You will live with your children. You will see your children, children. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for you. You will see your children, children. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. You are also going to pray for your children. Now, if you don't have a child, you are going to ask God to give you godly children, not the children not the children of, of disobedience. You are going to pray. If you don't have a child, they say, Lord, give me a godly children. Amen. If you have already, ask God to pray for them. Ask God grace to be upon their life. Ask the protection of God to be upon your children. Pray for your children right now. If you don't have one, say, Lord, give me godly children. Children that will love you. Children that will serve you. May they be the first and not the last. Pray for your children right now. Pray for your kids. Pray for them wherever they are. Ask God protection upon their life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for my children. The rod of the wicked shall not be laid upon the lust of the righteous. Least for the righteous put his hand into iniquity. I was young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children begging bread. Your children will not beg bread. My children will not beg bread. The, the, the spirit of disobedience will not be found in them. They will love God. They will serve God. They will obey God. They will walk in the vineyard of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to pray. Listen very carefully. When devil came to Job, he says, God put a hedge around Job. You are going to say, Father, let there be a hedge of fire around my, my family. A hedge. No serpent will penetrate into my home and bite. Let your hedge of fire cover my family. Can you pray for yourself right now? Let the hedge of fire cover my family right now. Pray for yourself. A hedge of fire. A hedge of fire. Surround your family. Surround your life. Surround your marriage. Surround your husband. The hedge of fire. Right now, surround. Surround this one that is watching. That we watch this video. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Hedge of fire. Surround to protect them in Jesus' name 
we have prayed. Amen. The Bible says that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And we shall say of the Lord is our God and our refuge that in whom we trust. Now you are going to pray that your family will be covered, that no weapon fashioned against them shall prosper. Any evil arrow from the village, wherever it is coming from, will not touch any member of your family. Cover, say, we hide our life in the, in, under the pavilion of the Lord. The Bible said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it and they are safe. You are already inside Jesus and you are already covered. Ask God for his divine provision, his protection, his guidance upon your family. Pray for your family. Pray for your children, on your unborn children. Pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Now I want you to understand this. Listen to me. What stopped your mother may have confronted you? You are going to pray that any power that is confronting you will not confront your children. You are going to pray any judgment your parents have 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 through them the, the judgment have risen in your family you will not be a partaker of that judgment your children will not be a partaker of that judgment what i mean by this there are some judgment that is a, a generational judgment you are going to pray that any judgment upon my family will not rest upon my life will not rest upon my children pray for yourself in the name of jesus christ any judgment upon my generation will not rest upon my life upon my wife upon my children upon messiah children upon this one that are watching me right now that will watch me right now the judgment will not be on your life in the name of jesus christ of nazareth amen hallelujah just thank god for tonight for answered prayers Thank God for tonight, for answered prayers. Bless the name of Jesus. And you are going to ask God for divine protection. Divine protection. That the Lord will cover you. The Lord will protect you. As you sleep tonight, there will be visions of heaven. You will see visions of heaven. Pray for yourself in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Father, I thank you for this one. Even though they have been online with me, let your anointing extend to them. Wherever you are, receive the anointing of God. Receive the oil, the fresh oil of the Holy Spirit upon your marriage, upon your life, upon your destiny. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for you by the unction of God upon my life. Your marriage, you will fulfill it in Jesus' name. Your marriage will not break. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray it shall be well with you. The grace of God is upon you. The favor of God is upon The blessing of God is upon your marriage. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your grace upon our life. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. You are blessed and you are favored. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Now, if you are blessed by this message, do me a favor, share this video. As you obey this word, God will richly bless you. And I want you to indicate whether you are blessed or not. If you know you are blessed, just write that you are blessed. Write it, tell me, yes, I'm blessed. If you know you are blessed, write it, I'm blessed. I learned something today, I'm blessed. Just write, say, I'm blessed, I learned something today. God bless you for that. As you write it, share the video. Let it keep on going. Keep on sharing it. Everybody must watch it. Those that are making error in marriage, they will change through this video. God will use it to change lives. Hallelujah. Please, if you feel like downloading it, download it and put it on WhatsApp. Keep on sending it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for being blessed. Thank you for being blessed. Thank you for being blessed. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for believing the oil of God on my life. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Thank you, brother. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm encouraged to do another video. Thank you very much. I'm happy that you have learned something today. Thank you and God bless you. 
remember to share this video god bless you those that are coming for the first time i can see some people for some couple i think for the first time god bless you god bless you i always do my video every i do prayers from 9 12 3 and 6 in by the daytime in the night time i do bible school from 11 o'clock in the night time i do bible school from 11 o'clock this time we are doing it uh, we are having a we are discussing on relationship and i will teach more on relationship if you are a married couple please don't miss tomorrow on it's very important there are things i ought to tell you that will help you and i believe that your marriage will be sweet again there are many people that are regretting of getting married to that man to that woman but after tomorrow i strongly believe you will love that man again the oil of god will come down and and do a new thing in your marriage hallelujah hallelujah thank you a lot of people are blessed ah wonderful 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 i, I thank god for you. you you believe the grace of god upon my life thank you very much thank you very much god bless you please after this video re listen to it again download it on your phone send it to people who ought to listen there are people who are making errors if you know that you know that you know that you know that this video has blessed you if you feel like downloading it download it send it to them let us not be focusing always on bad news people always watch 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 pornography on, on, on facebook let it not be for pornography let it not be for gossip let it not be for what this one say and what the other one let it be for jesus this is where you can grow may god bless you thank you very much i'm very happy to see that you are blessed may god be with you the men are not online today brothers please if you know you're online just indicate the brothers tell me you are blessed if there is any brother on the line can you just say yes write yes y e s if you know you are a brother on the line just write yes and god will bless you as you do that hallelujah there's no brother today there's no brother mama mia there is no brother online please invite your husband or your husband to be to watch this program it will really bless him give him to watch let him listen ah brother george god bless you brother Armslem, god bless you god bless you god bless you thank you very much and i know you're also blessed thank you very much for watching the video god bless you please share the video to the glory of jesus god bless you god bless you thank you very much hallelujah if you are staying within milan we are having a women's day this sunday don't miss it please our women's day is one of the town try to meet up god bless you as you come all messiah children be around on sunday our women's day we want to take it to a new level so that it can glorify god god bless you thank you brother george god bless you may the lord be with you so i will leave you people right now tomorrow by 11 o'clock i will be online if i'm not on time wait for me so that we treat on this marriage issue if you have questions to ask ask me the questions we will handle it may the lord in whom i serve give you a testimony in jesus mighty name amen thank you